to find out how destructive negligence and indifference are. It is enough to move between Hawaii and California and see the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. From wreckages of containers to children's toys, from plastic meshes to elements of household appliances, here is everything that a person can create. It was believed that the source of garbage is the river such as Yangtze, Indus, Huanghe, Amor, Mekong, Ganges, Zhuizhong, Haihe, Niger, and the Nile, as they supposedly bring 90% of anthropogenic pollution to the oceans. Therefore, the ocean cleanup has focused a significant part of its efforts on catching waste from rivers. Recent studies have proven the assumption. Rivers are not the main supplier of harmful products of human activity into the waters of the oceans. Where did so much garbage come into the ocean? Striking, first of all, is the fact that the appearance of the landfill island was not just noticed, but even predicted in 1988. It was then that the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released a publication in which, based on an in-depth analysis of the amount of drifting plastic in surface waters, scientists identified large accumulations of plastic particles and other debris. Several places have been named where the largest of the accumulations can form, but only oceanologist and athlete Charles Moore in 1997 saw with his own eyes and described the colossal layers of debris on the surface of the ocean. Already as of 2018, the reports of the National Center for Biotechnology Information included several 80,000 tons of waste, which form a dense garbage plaque, occupying about 1.6 million square kilometers. Recent flights over the waste exclusion zone have shown that it is not at all lifeless. Fish, sea turtles, and even our brothers in mind, dolphins and whales live in these waters. But they can see life and even survival. In the Philippines, they find dying beaked whales, in whose swollen bellies lie tens of kilograms of plastic decompose. And in Indonesia, locals found a dead sperm whale on the shore, in which there were more than a thousand ropes in the stomach alone, a long and painful death. Marine animals get confused in the garbage and are forced to absorb it, since the main part of the waste is microplastics that peel off from things when washing, from tires when driving, and so on. The lethal dish that results from falling into the water enters the lungs, gills, and stomachs of the inhabitants of the ocean, slowly taking away their life. At whose expense does the dirty killer exist? With whom and where does the killer plastic mesh start its journey? To an outside observer, the very idea of searching for garbage deposits will seem stupid, because the fight against garbage is in full swing. It would be more logical to increase the capacity of existing startups and get rid of it once and for all. In fact, the ocean cleanup decided to not just deal with the problem, but also eradicate it. If you block the source of the problem, then it will be possible to cope with the consequences. A team of researchers from the Ocean Cleanup Project and Wageningen University in the Netherlands examined 6,000 pieces of garbage from the garbage island. Long sampling and testing were needed for only one thing, to determine exactly where all this waste comes from. Scientists spent the whole day looking at the remains of words on the debris, identified the remains of symbols on the logos, trying to determine not only the composition of the garbage and what it was in the past, but also the country of its origin. The fragments were very difficult to identify, and the origin of many remained a mystery. About a third of all collected samples were completely mutilated. The remaining two-thirds turned out to be items inherent in the fishing industry. Canisters, buoys, fishing boxes, eel traps, and much more. Further, it became clear that half of the items were produced in the last century, and the oldest samples date back to 1966. Based on this, experts concluded that plastic in a garbage patch can persist for decades and release harmful substances. This confirms the urgent need to eliminate GPGP. Decomposed plastic will poison the seabed. And in fact, one piece is enough to kill flora and fauna, regardless of whether new garbage comes from rivers. The identification of the producing country gave unpleasant but expected results. The leaders in the supply of waste to the largest landfill on the planet are Japan, 
China 32%, the Korean Peninsula 10%, and the United States 7%. The contribution of other countries is quite insignificant compared to these figures. But something else surprised researchers the most. Everyone knows that land-based release of plastic prevails over the sea. Why does the fishing industry bring the lion's share of plastic? Various release scenarios had to be simulated. The models released virtual particles into the ocean from rivers and fishing boats and simulated their dispersion based on knowledge of the terrain, currents, and wind. It was the modeling that helped to determine that the model of the release of plastic waste from fishing vessels turned out to be the closest to the real one. Also, it was this model that was able to confirm the assumptions made about the countries responsible for the environmental disaster. What is more, this scenario, supported by the analysis of the remains, confirmed trawling activity brings the ocean the most problems, although fixed fishing gear and drifting long lines are much more dangerous for living organisms. These three indicators accounted for 95% of the malicious emissions that have shaped and continue to shape GPGP. So why did researchers err in their judgments for so long? An answer was also found to this. Conclusions were drawn from the garbage that washed the shore, and only the garbage that came from the ground had the highest chances of riding the wave. This in no way justifies the pollution of the rivers but it lays the main blame on the seafarers for what is happening. All this information is intended to become a new word in environmental protection. If activists used to address humanity in general, now they have found specific culprits in the face of countries with the most active shipping. But the most important thing that humanity needs to learn from this study is that it's not garbage, but the person who produces it that kills all living things. Millions of painful deaths from starvation or from fish stomachs torn by plastic are on people's consciences. And in order to save all these lives, it is worth continuing research and recycling garbage that falls into the salty ocean waters. It is worth making demands and lawsuits against those countries that are guilty of this. And it's worth doing everything on your part to prevent the loss of lives caused by an empty bag or an obsolete plastic buoy beyond which it is so enjoyable to swim while on vacation.